Hello everybody and welcome here to this live stream of Thursday. I have to look at the date, the 21st of September, first day of autumn actually, as my little daughter Evelyn, she's five, said to me that she had uh, been teached that in school. So great to have you here for an exciting recording, I hope, recording of uh, a piece by Kostas Papazaferopoulos, our Greek friend. It's opus 138 already, Hafner Sonata, Hafner Variations on the famous uh, Mozart uh, Symphony. There's a whole history and story behind that, but that's for another time. And if time allows, we're going to uh, record also some Pachelbel variations of his Hexacordum Apollinis. And those pieces actually are, will be recorded to go on CD later this year or early next year. So. If you see this live stream as a regular update later and this is your first time here on Authentic Sound, this channel is all about exploring the music from Bach to Beethoven and beyond, as we do with Pachelbel and with Costa, because that's contemporary music and early style. And we explore the music by sharing performances and the research uh, around that and uh, taking you hopefully on an exciting journey to ex inspire you as a musician or as a listener. That's all. What this is about and sharing that with you is a privilege if this is your first time here i'd love to have you subscribed and join the authentic sound community so to say or so to speak so i'm going to dive into chat a little bit to say hello to everybody and then focus on the recording everything of course will be recorded as usual on my clavichord my saxon clavichord the variations on the hafner theme are recent works that that Costas actually uh, wrote um, with the dedication. That's a beautiful story. I just share with you just a little part of that. Uh, actually, one of the uh, I would say family members, but I don't know in English how to name that. This is so much, so many generations later that the, of the original Hafner family is, is still called a princess, Princess Caroline. Caroline, Caroline, I don't know how to pronounce that in her language, but actually she's a, a great uh, art lover, musician, pianist herself as well. And this piece was actually dedicated to her. It was an idea that Costas had to take a theme of the menuet of the Hafner Symphony that Mozart dedicated to one of her ancestors and just dedicated to her. And so he presented the manuscript to her at the a music festival in Corfu recently in Greece that she organizes and um, I understood that he had a great time and that she um, received the piece um, with a lot of pleasure and complimented him. So tonight that's the recording of that piece and I'm sure that Costas and I am going to share that story too with, in his words with you in one of the coming videos or maybe live streams, who knows. So I just look in the chat to say hello to you and then we focus on the recording. As always, Anya's in the chat, she's now running behind the computer. I don't know, is something wrong? Well, the chat is not going on the computer, on the screen. Here it is okay. So she was, Anya was asking if the chat was okay. The chat behind, but on the, on the picture. On the screen, okay, I'll check just two minutes before I start, and there we go. So John is here, Robin is here, great to have you, Andy, I see. Yeah, great to have you. Hope your studies are going okay, sure that they do. Uh, Mohamed, Momo, should say, Ethan, nice to have you here. Yeah, we are almost heading to 5k subs uh, subscribers, that's a very long road, but and I'm not so concerned with subscribers because everyone we have is one person, so 4,300, so much, I don't know, 4,300 people, imagine that, so we're really proud to have that. Costas is here, so in the chat, uh, make sure to, uh, well, ask him anything you want. Uh, about the piece, Andre, welcome, Nikos, great to have you. Uh, Buffalo Bill, Little Dando TV, Andrea, Bach 685, Alexi is here, great. Yeah, Andrea says he's studying two years and writing his first sonata, so if you need a great teacher, Costas is the man. 
and actually that's not a joke I've seen him once teaching on composition it was blowing, blowing. I'm just going to check the, the chat problem that Anya is uh, referring to and then we're going to start That's fixed, you should see the chat now in the screen as well. Okay. So everything is being recorded on analog tape as usual to these microphones and you hear the sound to those microphones. Number of variations, nine. Okay, Anya. Oh, should turn on the cameras. Maybe it would be a nice thing if we would record it also on video. Since it is for YouTube. <laughs> That's a good sign if I forget things. Because it means I'm focused. I need a little mirror here. So second camera is pointing to my hands. Yeah. It's running. Okay.
That's all this for the credit roll for the patrons. I think I think this version was okay. I just need to uh, play the allegro section again because that's Anya. Yeah. Leave it on, eh? Okay. Just to uh, filter out some. It's, it's, it's really piano for the technique that I need here. That's better. That is much better. Just hear the beginning of variation three. It's really a 
fagot bass. Imagine a fagot player. Boom, 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 boom. Is much better. <laughs> mm, I don't know if I could. No, I can, I'm not going to do it again. Unless Cosas wants me to. It's 22 minutes. So I think it's okay. It's okay. Maybe just the last variation. Yeah. So is that great music or isn't that great music? I'm just switching off the cameras because then we continue to Paco Bell. Um, just checking the chat if that's possible. So a big applause book for Costas. Uh, this is this is really great music. Again, these variations are 
great, great, great music also to play. Oh, some passages are difficult, and on clavichord these are perjo like things. Uh, of course, he writes on the piano, and you can feel that sometimes it's impossible almost to go in between the here the white keys, the upper keys. Very difficult. So I sometimes change the fingering, which makes it, of course, more complicated. But that's just that. But I like the. Um, the focus that this piece has, because great theme, and the elements of polyphony, and it, it has it all. It's great. There's so much great music awaiting with uh, by Costas. There is an A major sonata here that I tried to date, so that will be recorded very soon. And there are, of course, the six quote-unquote easy sonatas that we are, we are working through together. I'm making fingerings for that. We're going to publish that November, December. will be a big project for Authentic Sound because we're going to uh, print it in, a, in score, really in, in the quality like a beer and writer edition, so one that really opens. It's very... Um, will last a long, lifelong time and then we're going to target actually piano teachers and keyboard teachers obviously because these sonatas are fit perfectly in the line between let's say Clementi Sonatinus and Mozart uh, C major sonata I believe Kakko five, four, five. 5 4 5 so this sonata the sonata facile so to say and that's all coming up not to mention his I don't know how 32 variations in theme that's a piece that will last probably 15 minutes if I play it completely. And I asked him to make a list of all the works that I forgot because there are there's an E minus, a minor sonata, I guess two. There's still an F major sonata to be recorded and I and whatnot. I mean, <laughs> it's great, great collaboration. By the way, today I got beautiful kind of Baroque music by I think a guy living in Norway. Got his name. That's because I'm so bad in names, but I can tell you who it is. If I find the scores back, just cooling down a little bit from this because before we go to uh, Simon Christian Nielsen, it's very different in style, but some elements I like, so who knows? And I, of course, lost my chat completely. Perhaps here it is. And then we continue with the hexacoding of uh, Taco Bell. Okay, that's running like this now on my phone. I hope you can see that. <laughs> so it's almost impossible to, uh, to read. And I'm not going to do that. Okay. Momo writes, he just starts the first partita by Bach a few days ago. Mm, don't play too difficult music. It's really hard. Um, okay. We might run into a little problem, and that's we are going to record now the Bach Bell for CD. Um, but Costa's music was also recorded on tape, and we decided actually to have everything that we record now at least. Um, have ready for CD or vinyl productions once, which means that we have to speed up our tape recorder. Most sessions for the YouTube recordings are recorded on seven half inch. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, that's the speed in which the, uh, the tape is running. And the higher speed you have, the better the signal noise ratio. I will not go into detail here. Uh, but the overall frequency response is better and you have le less noise which is always good and now we've recorded so his music on 15 inch and Anya asked we have 30 minutes per tape and Anya asked this afternoon how many minutes is the music is that Costa speed I said well six to seven but this over it's 18 minutes and now we have only one tape left because I've ordered new tape, it's not arrived yet. 
so we have 30 minutes of recording time, which means I will have to do my best with the Puckle Bell. Uh, before I'm going to start with Puckle Bell, um, actually I'm going to start with Puckle Bell, but before I'm going to record, start the record session, I'm just going to find my tempo here because that's the tricky thing with the Puckle Bell variations. It needs to go in one flow and then the, uh, the uh, what's that in English? Not the last variations, but the one before, the multi, I don't know what the word is. That's in triple meter and that's really difficult. And if you miss it by a hair, it's over. I mean, it needs to be spot on. So these variations uh, with page turning, I, I probably will wait a little bit for page turning. So it, it, it will be a kind of uh, uh, performance that has some pauses. So we have the number three, I call. I was practicing number four the, before the live stream. I think I'm going to start with number three. Just try some bars, guys, to find my tempo because the variations are still in my head. Cost as well. We'll see how it goes. If it just doesn't work, it's for another time. It's no problem. No. Uh, wait, wait one minute because I need to turn on the camera. That's running. Now this one, I need my beautiful mirror here again.
think that's okay. So now what to do? Do it again? Or I think that it was okay. I think that was okay. Nice actually. Okay. If I missed something, it's not really essential. And I I think I just going to continue now with the fourth one. Thinking on our tape. And then playing all the repetitions, so that's also great. But if I miss something, chance is big that I will uh, find the solution in the second repeater or vice versa. It's actually great having all these uh, YouTube recordings. Um, I believe this is piece number 125 or something. <laughs> it's incredible that you develop a kind of um, feel for that. And the great thing is that the clavichord is always at the same room, same location, same microphones now. So um, that's the reason why we can do this. Okay, just for the fourth one, checking my tempo. That's about the same. <laughs> No, there's a fourth on the next one. Okay. Not true. It's difficult to review my clavicle.
One more time.
If there would some, be some tape left, I would probably do the third one again, but we'll see how it sounds. I think the third one was okay, but the difference, I can be mistaken, between the first and the second take of the fourth one is, that's really big. At least that feeling I have. And at the beginning of the fourth one, I, had, I missed focus, I missed concentration, obviously. You start thinking on drums and things like that. And the great thing about recording is that you can forget about all of that. And so I kind of felt the concentration came back during the session and so did it again. It's not always working, but I hope it worked. I hope you like to say the same. Okay. I should have had this before. <laughs> really thirsty. That was Anya, my wife. In case you didn't know. So, I must say I like the uh, new way of, uh, well, uh, of authentic sound, so to say, that we don't have these project months dedicated to one composer, one series of pieces, but just go randomly from, from one style to another here. Certainly, actually, Costa style. One way or another, I find if I play Clementi, I always think of, of his work, of Costa's work, so I feel kind of a relationship and then going to Bachelbel, I like that. I like the project months as well, just focusing two months on the road time particular year, but I guess that on the channel it could need a little bit more of diversity. So I'm going to <coughs> activate the chat and then if there is still something on your mind, just leave it now because uh, <laughs> on the asks, aside from the hexachord, what will else be on the CD? Hexachord is only about 40 minutes. Well, yeah, that we have to see because 45 minutes, perhaps I have to time and see where we come. And then I was thinking on the Chacona in F minor, so the... Uh, <laughs> This one, and if that's, I mean, Pachelbel has, has composed other suites, other variations. They're actually all great. They're very simple, uh, but I think I will fill the CD with that. And there will be no vinyl disc from this. We will see how the actually sales for the vinyl box with the partitas go. Mozart München Sonatas. I've decided not to re-record those because I think they are really okay. So the versions on YouTube, I will go through the edit, of course, because 
to have them on CD, you don't need to hear a car or a page turning or things like that. They will go on CD and if there is a market actually already, if there is a wish to go on vinyl, we will press them as well. Same for the Pachel Bell, so everything has been recorded analog, so we can do everything we want. But the production of vinyl is, for discs, is really expensive. The CDs is, is, is uh, more feasible. So. Um, Philip, authentic for Pachel Bell's preference in these variations for relative major and the fifth. <coughs> Well, so his, his, his use of the keys, I don't know. Um, I don't know if that's typical for the 17th I, I really would know. But no, if, I, if you go further back, if I think on Swelink and the, North, the, 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 the Dutch composers, like you have Swelink and Antony van Noort, they wrote in minor keys with variations. I don't know. I don't know, really. Um, the, 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 the temperament thing is of course up for debate. I believe that in this series, if you go from the first to the sixth one, which is touching F, um, F minor, not only touching F minor, uh, but it's going to F minor, a B flat as a fourth grade in F minor, yeah. a D flat major. So, playing that on the fretted clavichord, remember we have done the first one on the fretted clavichord by Christopher Clark in the chapel back, which went very well on that small instrument. Also for a texture here, but you can tell it that it is as Pachelbel is moving from the old language to the more new language. And if you talk about, you can feel also that he used, used short octave in some of the pieces, but talking about temperament, I don't know. I think everything moved to a kind of expansion of the keys, like we've talked about in, in Bachwald in particular here. There will be tomorrow the second, uh, version, second video on CP Bach, so I will be tuning my clavichord. I re regretted that very much afterwards because everything I tuned had to retune and my clavichord was rather unstable after that. But anyway, so that, that you can use all the keys without any intervals really being out of tune. And if you have them, this interval here, um, yeah, what would I do without the wire? So, yeah. So you could say, well, he's using this kind of out of tune interval, or you're having a really um, unequal temperament. Or you could you could say, hey, I can use it as an effect. I don't know. Just thinking about that, and I've been thinking about this for a very long time. And you could say, well, I'm kind of biased because I want to make my point on on equal temperament, and that's not the case. I mean. In the performance, it's it's not essential. I mean, timing and cantabile playing is way more important than temperament for me, at least. But anyway, um, thinking about that for a long time, and, and Bach, of course, was influenced by the Bach Bell School. And if I am not misinformed, the first documented unfretted clavichords were exactly in the region where Bach Bell did. So, um, yeah. And for me, the reason that I developed the unfretted clavichord because, was because of the expansion of the keys. I wanted to play in more and more keys and 24 keys eventually. So they needed to uh, be able to change the temperament, which is not possible, and certainly not in a large ex to a large extent in the fretted clavichords because there the tuning is in the instrument. And so with this music, yeah, which works on organ as well, but it feels, I don't know, it feels like keyboard music, and that's possible that they're the first clavichords served for this music. Of course.
course, harpsichord, spinet, and pianola, that all was available. And I don't know, the research to be done. Yeah, the fugues, uh, Philip asks uh, if I have familiar with, with his fugues, some of them, they work great on clavichord and they work, they also, did, but that's probably also much related to organ. And for a long time, I would like to make an organ CD with Pachelbel's organ music because it's really, really good. Okay. Um, okay, there has been a time out I see in the chat while it's it's not something to it's of course Agnes moderating it and last time actually we had some 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 guys who were I don't know in, talking in, 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 the, in, in another language I will not go into detail and turned out to be that they were not talking what was related to this subject here I would say for the least so there Agnes a little bit so if things uh, and it's only one click if you, if, if you get time out so things can also go wrong so don't take it personally if it's just a miss uh, <laughs> okay there was a few questions when are you going to play at the Iraq again yeah I, there is a recording on on youtube with me playing on the Iraq piano but to be honest with you i've tried to play on the piano one year ago when Sophie was a little bit more serious about playing the piano. She's been teaching a little bit now on the piano and also Evelyn is starting, not on the clavichord. That's way too difficult for students, for young guys, for young, young, young students really. So I tried the piano and it's, it ruined my, my with, with one session of practicing it ruined my touch on the clavichord for one day. Suddenly the clavichord felt so small and my fingers were so, yeah. It doesn't work, it doesn't match. The pianoforte will come over there. Um, yeah, that will be much more close to the clavichord, but also different. But then you have not the difference in keys. You don't as much, you don't have the difference in key depth as much you don't it's very light playable clavichord is very light you apply more arm weight than on the piano that will be difficult but going to the Iraq is really really hard and in one way or another my my fingers refuse to grab all the later 19th century harmonies i can tell you if the piano forte is here it will be a great instrument for chopin as well. Of course Chopin moved to Paris and had there the playel pianos, later also Irar. Um, there is a very nice playel piano here, 1838, same type pianino as he had in Mallorca where he wrote his Preludes Opus 28, so Chopin. And I bought that really to play the Preludes on, it needs to be restored. But he, he knew, of course, the Viennese type instruments very well. So there might be some Chopin on that, but I don't know. That's one of the things I really regret, that it's so difficult to match, certainly to pick here our piano. Yeah. Okay. Then, I believe we had a long session worked hard it was really fun and as always i thank you for your presence here the, you really feel like an audience i that cannot tell that say more than if you are a musician and you have a youtube channel or you don't just make one and try it out to have a live stream while you play or record the level of focus is really like you're having a, a real audience and you're also very quiet all the time so it's wonderful and but no seriously it really feels like that and i feel my concentration level is way higher with you than without so thank you all for being here we will have a live masterclass on sunday now i will go through some pachelbel variations and with you and uh, talk to you about how i practice them a little bit like i did before the recordings to make a unity out of them 
and they are quite challenging to, to really bring them to life. Um, that's for Sunday. If there is another, uh, in two weeks, of course, we'll have another live stream recording. I have a lot of records, Clementi Sonatinis. Someone asked me to do that and they blew my mind because it's great music. We might have another session next Thursday, but that you will see on the channel because the live streams are announced there one week or several days before, so you can set a reminder for that. Thank you all. Have a nice day or night or morning, depending um, on the place where you live here on our planet. And hope to see you very soon again. Bye.